You know how we met? A pair of hucksters trying to rob each other. Unless you've been curled up under a desert rock like a pit viper all summer, you'll know that the long-anticipated follow-up to the impeccable Red Dead Redemption is out right now. Frankly, I'm amazed anyone is watching YouTube at this exact moment. The game is forecasted to sell more copies than there are people on Earth. Well, unless you're on PC. Stop laughing, console owners. See, my mule don't like people laughing. Red Dead Redemption 2 probably will come to PC eventually. As a fan of money, Rockstar would be mad not to. But in the meantime, I've put together a list of great Western experiences you can enjoy on PC. From open worlds to murder mysteries, this list has you covered. It's in no particular order, everything here is good. I'd love to hear your top Wild West games in the comments below, and if you do enjoy this video as you go along, click the little thumbs up icon and maybe even subscribe to the channel. It's the only one on YouTube that won't bombard you with Red Dead for the next month. That's gotta be worth something. If Red Dead Redemption 2 is the authentic Western, right down to horse parts shrinking in the cold, then Gunslinger is all about the lies and bogus legends of the West. It's a story being told in real time, with the narrator adjusting the action around you as bits of his memory come back, or rewinding a chunk of the level when he realizes he's told it wrong. Imagine the narrator from Bastion, only way flakier, and you're part of the way there. Good thing is, whatever story he does choose to tell, it makes for a superbly noisy gunfighting game. The way bandits flood the screen from left and right gives it the feel of a light gun arcade shooter, and there are big rewards for stringing together kills and keeping combos going by sniping out tin cans and pumpkins along the way. In case it isn't entirely clear, this is not a game about realism. It's a game about storing up luck so that you can slow down time and slip your head past incoming bullets. It's a game where concentrating turns the world grey and leaves big red enemies to plug away at your convenience, like super hot in Spurs. It makes Red Dead's Deadeye shooting look polite in comparison. And it has the best dueling of any game on this list. It's all about shrinking your aim by keeping one eye on your opponent while getting a faster draw by moving your hand closer to your gun. Or you can pull first and kill them dishonorably for fewer points, and at the end of the day, points are how the West was won. For just over ten pounds, this is a budget beauty. Montana, 1880. My name is Colton White. My father and I hunt game for the steamboat to travel on the Missouri. Neversoft's gun had the core ingredients of Red Dead Redemption. Before that game strolled in like Lee Van Cleef and blew our cowboy boots off with the kind of presence most games can only dream of possessing. If gun lacked Rockstar's polish, it was trying to do it all on PS2-era tech. And the spirit of the West is all about dreaming big in harsh conditions. You play on his path to revenge as Colton White, the product of an Apache American Union during the 1880s, in the years after the Revolutionary War as well as the American Indian Wars. The way I described it might sound like a history lesson, but it's actually about shooting lots of people in the head, in an open world that's not beautiful by today's standards, but overflows with things to stick on your cowboy bucket list. You can hunt wild animals, become the king of poker, herd cattle, and hunt bounties whilst fending off bandit attacks along the way. Make too much noise and you better believe local law will be on your rump too, adding to the chaos. You can also scalp your victims, which is so horrible you probably deserve a short stint in jail afterwards. It has all the makings of a solid, albeit melodramatic, western. It's all about legacy revenge, hot lead at high noon, and responding to the call of not quite the big beautiful woman that is Texas, but the great American country. It helps that it's brought to life by a cast of character acting heavyweights, like Chris Christopherson, Brad DeRiff, and Ron Perlman. It may have come out 12 years ago, but it still holds up. It saddens me to think that the only reason I played Gun at all, on original Xbox and not the PC, I have to admit, is because it came inside the console I bought from a neighbor. Talk about the best surprise of all time. Failure. That said, it may be as old and basic a version of Red Dead Redemption as a cowboy sipping a Starbucks, but Gun is a pretty good dupe, as they say. Worth checking out in my view. Desperados was made by Spellbound, and when I played it, I was mesmerized. The way it blended cinematic western with adventure game storytelling and real-time strategy dazzled my 11-year-old mind. To go from The Sims to Knives and Dynamite was quite the gear shift. 
It's a real-time tactics game like Commandos, only with six-barrel pistols and tinkling stirrups instead of gruff British soldiers. I was captivated by the isometric perspective of a world we usually see up close or very far away on the silver screen. You can control several heroes at once in your bid to capture an infamous train robber, though the star of the show is John Cooper. He's not the man with no name, but you might wish he was the man with no body. Guards have incredible eyesight and hunt you down at the tiniest hint of trouble. I was raised on some of the best westerns ever made. I guess it's mandatory when you're raised by an American on top of relatives supplying me with violent films years before I was old enough for them. So Desperados is a dream come true for those well versed in the genre. And if you're not, you can still enjoy the sight of a guy using balloons to drop things on bandits below. It still feels like a bizarre genre mishmash. Westerns are all about heat, tempers and who shot first, all of which are horrible attributes when trying to play as tactfully as possible. I'm not the stealthiest player either, so I just enjoy the roleplay, not trying to cause trouble, helping my buddies, and occasionally dying in blazing gunfire that make the events of the OK Corral look like a minor class dispute. Believe it or not, that's still a recommendation. The amazing thing about Westerado is that despite its pixel style, it has some of the best gun combat on this list. Your pistol here is a hindrance. Every bullet needs a key press to load, and every shot has to be manually cocked before you squeeze the trigger. It turns gunfights into a panicked rush, as you dash between incoming fire, loading your weapon, and then have to hold your nerve as you try to line your gun up with the many bandits on screen. Gunfights feel messy and disorganized, which is exactly how a western fight should feel, I imagine. It helps that around these brilliant lead slingers there's an ingenious murder mystery as you track the gunman who murdered your family. Helping locals with their chores earns you clues, gradually filling in a physical description so you can hunt him down and put a bullet between his eyes. Working out the size and colour of his clothes is a bit like Guess Who, only Guess Who doesn't end with public execution. Well, not in the rules I play. I love the idea that anyone around you could be the perp, and the fact that you can accuse random people or pull a gun on them in conversation, just to try and make them see things your way. Often this spirals out into further chaos, whole towns trying to murder you, or the death of key quest characters, but the story shapes itself around you and carries on. I've helped a postman protect his carriage from bandits who want to steal his hats. I've accidentally murdered people in a mock quickdraw contest. And I pretended to know the rules of poker. Westerado has it all. You can't talk about the Wild West without some good old-fashioned treasure hunting. Ah, the exciting allure of the gold rush. And the sad reality of shaking one of those frying pans into a river for 18 hours a day. SteamWorld Dig 2 is not strictly about gold, and it's certainly not set in California. It's a bit more steampunk than traditional Western. The 49er you're playing is a robot, and one that isn't your Brenner. Earthquakes have been rocking an old trading post above El Machino Mine, and it's up to you to figure out the whys and wherefores. So this platforming action game heads underground, pickaxe and grappling hook in hand. You hammer through the underbelly of this mining town, strategically bashing items out of rocks. You don't want to find yourself trapped down there in the dark, believe me. And double jumping to secret areas that hopefully hide handy treats. You'll also have plenty of opportunities to scoot back topside, to refill your lamp, trade, and speak with local yokels about, you guessed it, mining, and earthquakes, and other such desert-based topics. And of course, you can upgrade your gizmos, because what would a Metroidvania game be without gear gating? Now I like gunslinging as much as the next dog holiday, but SteamWorld Dig 2's exploration and puzzle solving makes for a nice change of pace, even if its intensity comes from crumbling rocks and lava instead of intimidating gazes from the local villains. It's all a setup. Playing a lot like XCOM in a Stetson, Hard West earns its place on this list with its bouncing bullets. Ricochet shots off buckets, and you can snipe enemies cowering in cover, which, let's be honest, is all we've ever really wanted from a Western game. It has other things to recommend too. Hard West is a hybrid game of XCOM-like tactics and a light RPG, where the story decisions impact the heroes you take into battle. If you've played Jagged Alliance, you'll be familiar with the idea. But there's something very true to the spirit of the Western about dragging wounded heroes through a number of battles, their mistakes and injuries adding up over time. It also does some interesting things with the idea of luck. Not the only game on this list to do this. Luck acts as a bonus shield, increasing the chances of a bullet skimming past your ear as long as you've got some on tap. 
You yourself can tap into luck to pull off trick shots and other flashy techniques, though you do run the risk of your luck literally running out and something terrible happening to you in the next turn. As the game continues, it shifts from traditional Western tales to daft fights against satanic beasts, which is kind of a shame, as we'd have happily played a whole game of cabin shootouts and farmyard tussles. I guess if you were a fan of Red Dead's zombie-filled expansion, you'll probably get a kick out of this one. If you're more of a McClintock, or a million ways to die in the West kind of person versus, say, High Plains Drifter, then West of Loathing might just be for you. Crudely drawn, in more ways than those stick-figured visuals, this Western spoof is the epitome of role-playing heaven, for folks looking for fun of the themed kind. Set in the fictional distant lands, just west of Loathing, this comedic bent on the American Southwest of the 19th century includes the good, the bad, and the weird of this genre. Character classes, for example, fall between cow punchers, the heavy lifters, a la Saddle Up the Wagons pilgrim John the Duke Wayne, bean slingers, which is code for spellcasters, because if Bone Tomahawk or Cowboys and Aliens taught us anything, it's that Westerns need some supernatural forces to make it extra deadly, and snake oilers, who can brew special tonics in between gunslinging, like the patent liver tonic that darkens and enlarges your liver that is obviously too lily for the kind of liquor you can't buy on credit. For all the jokes, West of Loathing is perhaps the most Western-like Western out there right now, kind of like the True Grit remake. Though it approaches the genre with humour and good-natured roasting, it actually captures the spirit of the cinematic Old West right down to the spittoon, if you're particularly partial to chewing tobacco. <laughs> If this were a list about Clint Eastwood and not the Western genre, I'd be punning about feeling lucky right about now. But it isn't, so I won't. However, luck is the fuel that feeds your fire in Luxlinger, a game where you shoot, knife, and duck, the latter being literal. And I suppose a Dirty Harry-ism wouldn't be too amiss here, in that the game is pretty weird. Gritty, but weird. Luxlinger has the flashy action of, say, Once Upon a Time in the West. Look at that swishy reloading animation crossed with a comedic, support-your-local-sheriff spin on the genre. You'll literally be dodge-rolling bullets and blasting people into tiny pieces, whilst also playing music, completing physics-defying feats, and using your trusty duck to collect your throwing knife. Because what else is there for a duck to do in a western? Like I said, weird. Where the game gets real interesting is the concept of luck, which is collected as currency from hidden stashes and dead bodies, and used in a myriad of ways. It can help you make a daring jump, for example, or cause an incoming bullet to swerve away from you. On the flip side, a platform might fall away for an unlucky player. With enough luck, though, the world may even save you from a fall elsewhere, but only with Lady Luck smiling on you. Odd, it may be, but the game also manages to be authentic to the borderline absurd filmic genre of the Western. More so the spaghetti kind. Whilst playing it, and even though the soundtrack is superb enough to listen to on its own, all I could hear in my head was Dean Martin crooning Five Card Stud, which tells me this game has charm and charisma out the wazoo. So we may not have the big daddy of Western blockbusters on PC, but we have enough six shooters and spittoons to keep us playing until Red Dead 2 does ride into town. I'm sure we've missed a couple of absolute gems, so I'd like to hear even more suggestions and discussions below. Do share your favorite Western films too, we're in that kind of rootin' tootin' mood. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to subscribe for more like it. We cover all things PC gaming related, from the robot apocalypse of Generation Zero to our ongoing Divinity Let's Plays, where we recently asked an elf to lick ambiguous meats. If you can resist that sales pitch, you're stronger willed than I. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again soon. Goodbye for now.